Hello, hello, good afternoon. It's Monica from Life as Art, and this is the Saturday 3.30 p.m. demo at the Let's See New York online crop. And we had a lovely afternoon during chat and craft, visiting and um, seeing what everybody was up to. And so now we're going to be doing some creating. Let me just grab my catalog here. We are going to be using the featured collection for the month of November, which is the Silver Bells collection. And we are going to be using some of the paper pack and um, one of the um, coordinating cardstock colors plus a contrasting cardstock color. We're also going to be using a really fun set that is a Christmas Cardinal stamp and stencils. And if you joined me for the catalog launch party on the first, then you saw me create something with this already, but we're going to do some more creating with it again today. So let's get started. I'm just going to put my catalog away. If you're joining me live, just say hello or howdy so I know you're here. And if you're joining me later on replay, you can just say replay. I see my mom is watching. Hello, mom. So we're going to begin our accordion Z fold card with a large piece of scarlet paper. And that is the contrast color that I'm going to be using today. And it has been cut to five and a half inches by 12. So it's a good size piece of cardstock for our card base. So let me just line it up on my Mercer mat. We're going to do some scoring to create our accordion Z fold card. Hey, Heather, nice to see you're watching and Deborah's here too. So to do our scoring, this is going to be really easy scoring. I must admit, this is going to be easy. We're going to do the two, four, six, eight kind of scoring. So we're going to score at two inches. Then we're going to sco score at four inches. Then we're going to score at six inches. And then we're going to score at eight inches. Two, four, six, eight. Totally easy. We can handle that. All righty. It's Saturday. We need to do something that's easy. Now, this is going to be the back panel of our card and everything else is going to be towards the front. So we need to pretend that this is our center fold. That means we're creating a valley fold. We're pushing that crease line down into the valley and we're going to make sure that it lines up. It should line up along the top and the bottom, but it should also kind of match up with that four inch um, score line that we created. So this card is going to be just a little bit shy of a standard card size. Normally, our standard is four and a quarter by five and a half. But because this last panel is only four inches, we're going to end up with a four by five and a half. But that's OK. We will use up the extra space in our envelope for a little bit of thickness. We're going to compensate for being a little bit narrow by being a little bit thick. <laughs> Now we're going to make an accordion fold. So if this is a valley fold, then the next one, the six inch crease line has to be a mountain fold. And that means we're pushing up, we're pushing the score line from the back up the mountain. And so all these rest will fold to the back. Like so, making sure everything lines up. So now we have our valley fold right here and our mountain fold right here. So then if we're following the pattern, the next will be a valley fold. So we push the score line down into the valley because we go down into the valley. <laughs> and then the last one is gonna be a mountain fold. So we're gonna push the score line up the mountain like so. It's just like making a paper fan, right? Back and forth, back and forth. So now we have a lovely bunch of mountain valley, mountain valley. And this last one is, oh, I'm, I'm so used to me, my camera being on this end of my phone, and now it's on this end. So I keep trying to show you stuff over here. 
it's not over there. It's over here. I got to wrap my brain around that. So now you can see that our card is going to open like this. And we're going to have a lovely bit of accordion action happening. Must always make the noise. <laughs> now we want to decorate this with some of those gorgeous pattern papers from the Silver Bells collection. The first piece we have is this gorgeous mink. It's got the lovely little swags of like little pearl garlands going across it. And this has been cut to three and three quarters by five and a quarter. And yes, I will be posting all of the measurements when I post the completed card photos. So if you don't get them all written down, that's okay. So this is three and three quarters by five and a quarter. Just gonna use my tool here to help me take the backings off. There we go. And this one is going to be centered in the center. Now I'm gonna make sure my swags are going the right direction so that they're actually swaggy and not little hills. And we'll center it on that back panel, leaving a nice little bit of the scarlet cardstock showing all the way around. And now we need some pieces that are going to go on these four panels. And so I've chosen four other patterns from the Silver Bells collection and they have all been cut to one and three quarters by five and a quarter. So the first one is this beautiful large scale pattern that has all the bells and hollies and bows on it. And we're just going to get some adhesive on that. And we'll stick that on the front, the very first panel here. Line it up so it's in the center. So beautiful. I love the colors in this. It looks so elegant. Our next piece, we're going to have the toffee stripe. It's nice because it's got a wide stripe. And then in between the wide stripes, there's two little tiny pin stripes. I'm having a hard time telling whether you can see that on the camera. But um, and again, same size, one and three quarters by five and a quarter. All four will be the same. This is the great thing about using a paper collection is that you usually get a nice little very a variety of patterns that are all matchy matchy. So we're going to add our stripes into the next panel. And then in the third one, we're going to use the back side of this pattern, which are these fun ornaments. They look so vintagey and gorgeous. And we're just going to add some adhesive again, same size, one and three quarters by five and a quarter. There we go. In the third panel, like that. And then the last one, we're going to use what's on the back of the stripe. And it's this nice toffee geometric shape that's sort of florally inspired Add our adhesive i usually just throw my um backings off to the side of my desk and then gather them up later i'm like you know i do have a little trash can that hangs on the side of my desk i could just put them directly in the trash instead of you know making a mess on my table so that's what I'm trying today. <laughs> I'm trying to be a responsible crafter and putting my trash away as I go. We'll see how long that lasts. Okay, the next thing that we want to do is we don't want to have this card open up for days and days. We want to have something that kind of bridges in between and creates a focal point on the front. And so to do that, I've got another piece of Scarlet cardstock. And this one is um, seven inches by three and a half. And I'm gonna line that up on my Versamat because we're gonna score it right in the center. So we're gonna score it at the three and a half inch mark. Three and a half, line it up, score it. And we are going to mountain fold this. So we're gonna push that crease line up the mountain 
which makes the light sides of the paper go together. Just making sure that it all lines up before I grease it down. My score line was a little smidgen off on that one, but that's okay. That's why we check. So now we've got this mountain folded piece and it is going to attach onto my card, tucked in the front and then tucked in before we get to that last panel. And we're going to center it so that it's equal distance from top and bottom and side to side, just like that. Okay, so now before we get this stuck in, we're gonna do a little bit of decorating on it. The first piece that I want to bring in is a piece of white daisy that has been cut to three inches, sorry, three and a quarter inch square. And we're gonna do a little bit of messy on here. So let me just grab my all purpose mat, otherwise known as the messy mat. And I'm gonna use something from my stash. So it's not something that you can um, purchase right now. It's the Espresso Shimmer Brush. And Espresso is a really nice deep brown color that looks really good with the scarlet. But if I didn't have the color I wanted, I would get the clear shimmer brush. Shake it up so that all the shimmer gets worked in. And then I would use my ink pad. So say I wanted toffee. Say I wanted some toffee shimmer. I would squeeze, squeeze, squeeze my ink pad, transfer some ink to the lid, use my clear shimmer brush, pick it up, and then make sure that I wipe this really good before I put it back on, okay? And then I can use what I've picked up with my clear. But I want to use my espresso from my stash. <laughs> and so I'm gonna give it a shake. You can hear that little ball rolling around. That's mixing in all the nice little glittery shimmer. And then what you want to do is remove the cap and you're going to give your shimmer brush a little squeeze to make sure that the end is really nice and juicy. So you can see I'm getting a little bit of juicy goodness on there. And what I want to do is I'm gonna just use the handle of my piercing tool and then do a few little taps onto my white daisy cardstock. And that's going to just add some little bit of splatter there kind of break up that white expanse. Always recap your shimmer brush and always store with the brush tip up. Don't leave it laying flat. Um, what happens is there's like a double chamber in there and when you shake it up and then tip it and squeeze, it fills up a second chamber that feeds the brush. If you leave that sitting horizontally, it will eventually start leaking out and you're going to open it and your cap will be all full and it'll make a mess. But if you tip it back up, that second chamber drains back in. And then when you shake it the next time, all that shimmer will get mixed in much better and it won't leak everywhere. <laughs> so shimmer trip, shimmer brush, always with the brush tip up. And then I can just use my stamp chamois to wipe that off. And we're gonna set this aside for a minute just to allow that shimmer to dry. I always store my all-purpose mat rolled up, just sitting on my shelf. Now, the next part, so that first one that we did the splattering is going to go here. We also need to do something on here. And I wanted to kind of vary what was happening. So my next piece of white daisy, I cut it a little smaller. So this first one, See, it's a little bigger, and this one allows more of the scarlet to show. And I think that's kind of nice. You don't have to do it that way. But this is a three inch square. And what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to stamp my sentiment on here. And so um, you remember I was talking about the Christmas Cardinal stamp and stencil pack. And there are some lovely sentiments on here. It's got you make my heart sing, holding you in my heart, sending Christmas cheer, and joy to the world, along with the stamp for the cardinal, and then um, four layering stencils that allow you to color in your, um, your booty. 
So we are going to um, stamp our sentiment and I'm going to use the sending Christmas cheer stamp and my scarlet ink. So it matches my contrasting cardstock. Hey, Laura, nice to see you're watching. Oh, you may need that set. Yeah, it's kind of fun. And I don't know about where everybody lives, but we have a lot of cardinals that come or birds that are actually very similar to cardinals. They could be cardinals um, that hang around our house in the winter time. And so that's nice. And you know what? I've actually seen um, people using this stamp and stencil to create blue jays too. Now you have to kind of modify it a little bit to get the blue jay look, but totally, totally doable. Okay, so let's add this on here. We're going to put some adhesive on the back, like so. And again, we're going to put this on the right hand side. I almost put those backings on the side of my table instead of in the trash, but I caught myself. All right, we'll just center that. And then we're going to bring in this piece that we did the shimmer brush on. Now I'm going to put my adhesive right on here so that I don't have to flip that over um, in case any of that shimmer is still a little bit drying, <laughs> still in the process of drying. And we can go ahead and center that like so. Just give it a little push down. Okay, and now we can adhere it to our card. So to do that, we want to add some adhesive on the back side. We're going to put some over here. I'm just keeping that shimmer brush stuff. It's probably dry now. We're going to put a little strip there, and then we're going to come to this other side and put a little strip there on the end like that. And let's see, let's do, we'll take the adhesive off the one that's on the front first. I think that's how I did it last time. Do, do. And it seemed to work better than other times um, because we want to center it. We want to center it from top to bottom and side to side and you're kind of squishing this down. So if we did the back one first, it would try to stick itself down before we were ready. And you should never have things that stick before you're ready. All right, that looks good to me. So we can go ahead and push that down and then we can just open this up, take the backing off this or add our liquid glue. And then all we need to do is close it just like that. So it adheres to that inner part. And now when we stand our card up, you can see the fun um, silhouette or profile that we've created. And I think that's such a super cool fold and really easy to accomplish. You're just creating an accordion and then putting a folded card on top. But um, lots of fun, I think. And then in this last panel here, I've got one more piece of the white daisy. This is where we're going to write our message. <clears throat> so this is again a three inch square and then some contrasting scarlet cardstock that has been cut to three and an eighth. So there's going to be just a tiny bit of the scarlet showing around the edge. And I thought it was kind of nice to do that, um, break up all the different sizes as we went across here with these three panels, I mean, you could do it the same. Look at that. I just put my backing on my table instead of in the garbage. There we go. <laughs> Creatures of habit, I tell you. And then we're just going to center that on there. And then we can put it down inside. Now I'm going to keep my adhesive closer to the middle for this because I'm going to end up tucking something in um, before I'm all done. Do a little bit of embellishing. So what we want to ensure when we stick this down here, we can pretty much center it. We just want to make sure that it's all covered up by the um, panel that closes. So I'm just going to set that there for a second. Does it get covered? Yes, it does. 
a little bit crooked. We'll fix that. And there we go. And I'm leaving this blank because that's where we're going to write our message. Okay. Now let's add a little bit of embellishing. We're kind of doing all the things before we get to the star of the show, right? We're going to put our cardinal on the front. So from the evergreen die cuts, now this is the other collection in the catalog. We have the evergreen collection and there's some fun die cuts and these are in um, um, like craft paper color and in white and there's different ones on each one. And I kind of like these big snowflakes here. And so I'm gonna just pop out one of these snowflakes to use as an embellishment on my silver bells card because you know even though they're in a different collection you can totally mixy matchy just pop that out and these are very low profile they're not even um, as thick as cardstock so it's not going to add any bulk into this card really of any kind and there we go but I only have one this size, and I kind of want to have a little bit up here and a little bit down here. And so you know what the solution for that is. You just take your snowflake and you trim it in half so that you can get a twofer, because we're going to tuck it anyway. So there we go. We've trimmed our snowflake. And we also need to use some liquid glue for this because we've got little bits and yeah, I'm gonna do my trick where I put it on my hand. You know me, a little bit of glue on my hand. Grab my tweezers, grab my die cut. Which way do I want it? I think either way works. And then I just tap it into the liquid glue. And even if I tap off on my hand, it removes any excess glue. And then I can just come up here and just tuck it right under the very edge of that card stock. Lovely. And then come down here to the bottom. And again, I don't think it matters which side I use. We're going to tap it again. Get some nice little glue. This is great for intricate little cut pieces. And let me see if I can get all my hands in the screen here. We're going to tuck this under the edge at the bottom like so and glue it down just a nice little bit of embellishment and when you close it you'll actually see a tiny little bit of that showing and that's kind of nice too adds a little different texture i'm just going to wipe that glue off my hand there's barely anything left but it's already pretty much dry <laughs> Okay, now for the main event. We need to play with this cardinal. So I've got it loaded up into my um, stamping platform. I've got a piece of white daisy that we're going to be stamping on. Stick that in there like that. And then grab my intense black ink and ink away. And the great thing about the platform is that I can stamp it more than once because I know I'm going to stamp more than once. It just kind of goes without saying. Looks good already, but we're going to give it a little bit more because the Cardinal's got those nice black markings on it. And we don't want to, you know, have faded markings on our Cardinal. Now, some of these lines and shading areas are supposed to look faded. That's the way the stamp has been created um with um little bits of shading and i think that's super fun where you get that variety of intensity in your stamp that's something that close to my heart's been working on and they've been having good success with that making stamps that create different intensities now it's time for the stencils and so with your stencils you get four different layers so we've got the big shape of the bird. We've got the tips of the wing and the tail. We've got the feet and the little pine branchy bits. And then we've got the actual branch. So we're going to start with the branch. And I'm going to use my toffee ink for this. 
I'm going to grab that nice little piece of um, burr liner. I've got my blending brush that I use with my browns. And what we want to do is line up our stencil. Now, I am going to fussy cut out, because you knew I was going to do that, right? My bird when I'm done. If I was not going to, and this is what I demonstrated on uh, Wednesday during the catalog launch party. If I was not going to fussy cut my bird, I would, because I've got the little edge of my stencil here, um, I would actually take a piece of sticky note and just protect that area so that, you know, if your brush kind of goes a little too far, you're going to get that little line where the, where the ink's going to sit. Um, so you can always protect those areas with a little sticky note. All right, let's get some toffee ink and we're just going to quickly ink our branch all the way along. You're going to see how fast we can color this cardinal. So there's our branch. I'm going to set that aside. Where am I going to set it? Over there. So that was the toffee. Then we're going to bring in some Sundance because our next stencil has the feet, the beak, and then the, the greenery. So we're going to line this up, lining up our beak, lining up our feet. Those are the two to watch the greenery. You know, you can kind of go outside the lines on those. There we go. So a little bit of Sundance on the beak, like that. A little bit on the feet, like that. And then we're going to grab our rosemary, which looks really good. It's a nice green for with this Silver Bells collection. We're going to ink up our little greeneries up there and down here like that. And then our last, no, our third stencil. We haven't got to the last yet. My goodness, we're rushing things. Um, our next stencil is the body of the bird. So we're going to go ahead and line this up. Now you will see there's a bit of a glow of red because I have used this stencil before and red inks are heavily pigmented. And so um, don't panic. Your stencil is a tool. It will get dirty. It will get stained. You just wash it and, you know, remove the excess off of it. But it's that's just the nature of the beast. So our blending brush, we're going to color our whole bird in. I know some of you are just fabulous with your markers and your pencil crayons and all that stuff, watercoloring. But my goodness, stenciling <laughs> gets this birdie colored lickety spit, lit, lickety split. And then we're going to put our second layer on our bird. And this is going to do a little bit extra. We're going again with the same scarlet. We're going to do the end of the tail there. There's a bit on the wing where we're going to add a little extra color and also on the tummy of the bird. So it does the shading for you. For those of you who are a little bit eh, about shading, look at that. We've colored our whole bird. Now, if I wasn't talking and showing you, I could have done that even faster. But here you can kind of see, see how there's this little line right there and here and here. That's where if you were doing this on, say, a layout or on a card where you were not going to fussy cut it, you would want to protect those little spots so that you didn't overshoot. All right, now we're going to fussy cut. So we're just going to quickly go around. We've got our micro tip scissors here. And we're going to leave a halo all the way around our birdie, pivoting our paper, cutting off the excess when we get to it. Hey, Laura, nice to see you're watching. I think I said hello before. Um, I have used alcohol spray from the dollar store on my stencils and it works a dream to take off the ink that same. Yes, you probably could. <laughs> um, probably hand sanitizer because it's the alcohol that does it. 
So a lot of people clean off their stamp blocks with hand sanitizer. You just have to make sure that you rinse them off once you're done. Especially if you're doing your stamp blocks because you don't want any residue getting on your actual stamps. Probably not quite so um, necessary on the stencils, but you never know. You never know. We're just going to go all the way around, trimming out our cardinal. And usually I rough cut first, and I didn't do that. So now I'm having to deal with a lot of excess paper. There we go. That's another good tip when you're fussy cutting. And around the head and the wing. And then when you get to the evergreen bits, you can kind of do jaggedy motion by pivoting your paper like that. It doesn't even matter if you're really following what's there. You're just making it kind of jaggedy and it'll all kind of blend in. So just jiggle jog a little bit like that. And around the last little bit. Um, I had, when I was kind of working out my design for this card, I had actually thought about stamping just this little tuft of greenery in, and tucking it, fussy cutting it out, of course, and tucking it in where I put the snowflake. So that would be another option for an embellishment is just um, to, to stamp and stencil just that little end and create a little, a little embelly that way. Okay. There we go. Fussy cut. All done. Let's add some foam tape to this because we want to pop them up. Be super, super cute. Let's add a few little bits of foam tape here and there. Like that. Just a little skinny one for down on his leg. And then a couple more on his body. And we are good. Let's bring back in our card. Oh, that's the finished card. We want the one that's not finished. I always do, I practice ahead of time. Um, I don't think I've ever done a card where I didn't practice. <laughs> Cause you know, then I have more than one to share after the fact. In fact, sometimes I even make more um, than one ahead of time. And sometimes I make even more after cause I love it that card that we did earlier today, there's going to be a few of those getting made because I love that door. All right. Now this little guy, he's going to stick up a little bit and stick down a little bit. And that's perfectly fine. That gives a nice little bit of um, extra texture. And then I'm going to bring in some clear sparkles and some bitty sparkles. These are sort of classic embellishments. They work pretty much for anything. So there's some clear sparkles, some bitty sparkles. Grab a sheet of those. And of course, you're going to need your piercing tool for this. Let's get one of these big ones. Stick one there. And then, especially for these little ones, you got to scoop them up with the end of the piercing tool. Otherwise, they're not coming. And these are going to look really nice with that shimmer brush that we splattered because, as the name implies, there's a little bit of sparkle in a shimmer brush and a little bit of shimmer. So the shimmer and the bitty sparkles and the clear sparkles work lovely together, creating a nice little look and shine on our card. I don't know. Can you see that nice little shine and sparkle there? And so we started out with our scarlet cardstock. We folded it up to four, six, eight, and created our accordion on the back. Then we added another piece of scarlet, just folded in the center and sandwiching around those accordions. Then, of course, adding in all of our gorgeous pattern paper from Silver Bells, a little bit of stamping, a little bit of splattering with the shimmer brush a little bit of inking with the stencil, and then, of course, some bling. And we even threw in a couple die cuts 
from the Evergreen Collection. So I hope you guys enjoyed seeing that card come together. And if you make one just like it, um, be sure to take a photo and pop it in the comments when I post the picture of my card and then we can all see it and enjoy it. All right, have a wonderful rest of the afternoon and we will see you again soon. We're back on at seven o'clock tonight for Chat and Craft. See you then. Toodaloo. Bye.